We're going to be joined first by Dr. Ann Collins from the Canadian Medical Association to discuss the public advocacy role of physicians. We'll then turn to our panel of legal experts on employment law. Dr. Collins, thanks so much for joining me today. You know, physicians and health professionals have a role to play in educating the public about the pandemic, but there are a wide variety of opinions among these professionals. What guidance do you have for health professionals about public statements on COVID? One of the beauties of uh, the profession of medicine is that we have a, a very strong code of ethics. And that code uh, obliges us not only to provide the best patient care possible, but it also obliges us to have a very strong interaction with society in general. And by that, that means providing uh, evidence, science-based, evidence-based advice to uh, public policy makers and decision makers. And so during the pandemic, there's been a huge uh, flood, if you will, unprecedented of scientific evidence that, that changes uh, on a very rapid basis. And so although it means sometimes it looks like opinion, uh, in fact, it's sometimes it is, it's catching up with the evidence that, that comes out at such a rapid pace. So what is the type of uh, comment that might get a physician reprimanded by, for example, the regulator? What's the standard that the regulator uses? Well, that's probably a question that's better, better posed to the regulator. But I would suggest to you that if that opinion is not based in, in science or what is the commonly held scientific view of the physician community, you're probably walking um, you, you know, a thin line there in terms of uh, the support that you bring or the credibility that you bring to that statement. And so what about statements that might get physicians in trouble with an employer, for example, be it a, a hospital or a clinic? What guidance do you have for physicians in, in that situation? So there have been some widely publicized cases lately where it appears that uh, physicians have been reprised for statements that they've made in public. And without knowing the full circumstances behind those situations, it's very hard to comment. But I will say this, sometimes stakeholders want everybody to speak with one voice. But if within that structure, a physician bel believes that what is being imparted is not based in science, not based in evidence, then really it's also in that situation their duty to speak up about that. There certainly is not, not one voice when it comes to physicians. I've seen a huge uh, spectrum of commentary on the issue. Um, we've got about a minute left. Um, can you tell our viewers if you'd like to see any changes that could allow physicians to speak openly about their concerns when it comes to government policy? Absolutely, and thank you for that question. With the uh, explosion, if you will, of, of uh, social media, uh, many physicians have been, some of our most publicly speaking physicians, our chief medical officers of health, have been maligned, have had threats, uh, have had uh, people showing up at their home uh, generated uh, by social media activity. And so there really needs to be a hard look at that, how to control that uh, to some extent or to at least filter out some of that so that these, it's important that physicians feel safe, that, the, that they can deliver a message that will, uh, it may be a hard message, maybe a hard message to hear, but so that policymakers and decision makers have the best support and evidence provided to them. Well, it's an incredibly important public role, and I thank you so much for your advocacy. We'll be back after these commercial messages. Thank you. <laughs> 